trucks. Here we are. We might be drunk. We're doing it. We're back. Worlds are colliding. We got a big guest. We, An might, old we pal. might be Tuesdays. Oh, we might be gay. We, we might be a lot of things. How are you, JoJo? Genuine question. Where are the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> Am I got... on? Am I here? One here. One there, here. There. One oh. here. I noticed none of them are pointing at me. Oh, this guy. Is this that's mine? you. That's your camera. camera? That's, yeah. that's right, your A. You're good. A I mean, I'm looking at you, assholes, and I don't see nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So do I talk to you? Or do I talk to talk the, to uh, us. the people talk at home? Talk to us. Hey, folks. We're the hosts. Yeah, we, we're going sober today. You got a, what, a green tea, I assume? I got an Emperor's Clouds Mist Grande. Just had my chocolate chip cookie in the lobby. What, what is an Emperor's uh, Mist? What is... uh, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a green tea. It's, a, it's like a standard green. You want a sniff? Yeah. You might get a little bit of my breath on the lip there. It sounds like a good queef. It's an Emperor's Mist. Not bad, right? That's all right. Just a typical green. There's also the Jade Citrus Mint. That's mm. a mint. Mm. Green tea, and I don't care for the mint. Nah, I don't like the mint either. Yeah, what I'm just... not a big tea. I associate with being sick. I can't uh, do tea. Oh, often. interesting. Mm. Don't tell it's the like, British. Well, it's like chicken noodle to me. I, I it's like I can't get amped up for it because I'm like I, I just I'm like yeah, I'm I sick. love chicken noodle. I like it too, but I get it when I'm sick. I see. Associate. I always think this though. It doesn't people are always like, if you're sick, have a little green tea. But I'm like, I drank three green teas a day, right. every day, and I got sick. <laughs> yeah. So it must be how rappers feel with scissorp. They're like, you need some cough medicine. He's like, that's all I drink. I mean, I mix it with uh, hooch. <laughs> What's scissorp? That's they drink cough syrup to get oh. fucked up. I oh, had Nyquil syrup. for the first time during COVID. I never had it. It it's works. Incredible. It Delightful. works. Yeah, that shit's great. Fantastic. We call that a free lapse in the sobriety business. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, you take a nice Nyquil. And, <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it's pretty good. Silent free lapse. Mm -hmm. So it is allowed. Well, I take the pill form. I wouldn't take the liquid because you know, next thing you know, I'll be raping your father on, on Christmas Eve. Because it does come in a glass, a shot glass. You got a exactly. Cap. Yeah. No, totally. You got to do pill. Damn. Oh, yeah, I never yeah. thought about that. Starts with Mucin XPM, it ends in a fucking glory hole. That's yeah, no, there's people that do that. People like alcoholic, they drink hand sanitizer or uh, whatever, NyQuil. Damn. Yeah. I've crushed up a Tylenol PM and shoved it up my ass. Sure, snort that shit. <laughs> do a line. Yeah. Tylenol yeah. PM works too. That'll knock you right out. It will. Benadryl. Eh, I've kicked that because it, it. I'm immune. Well, you wake up. Mm. It's not quality sleep. Well, no. Tylenol PM and Benadryl is the same drug. Ah, shit. Yeah. Same sleep drug. It's all mental. Yeah. What do you do? Do you take a drug yes. to sleep? Anything? People are starting to hate that watch, by the way. Really? A lot it's, of it's a problem. Yeah. Oh, damn. It yeah. buzzes every hour. It said, uh, someone wrote Mark Norman's watch. The guy did like three takes of it. It was one of those tweets where he deletes it, rewrites it, and then writes it again. Uh, but he was like, Mark Norman's watch has interrupted more podcasts than Will Smith. Or something. It didn't make wow. sense, but it kind of made sense. Something. It doesn't make yeah. sense, but you can see that they don't like it. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Read between the lines. <laughs> <laughs> interrupted more podcast, more comics than Kanye. Eh? Uh, I'm trying to punch it up. Did he interrupt? Well, well I guess Myers? interrupt is the wrong word. He it's, he fought with D.L. Hughley, Pete Davidson, and Trevor Noah. And Mike Myers, right? Is Wasn't that right? Oh, yeah. Mike Myers. Well, he, he didn't fight with him. him. He just made it weird, right? He just made it weird on yeah. SNL. That's a different podcast. It's Pete Holmes podcast. <laughs> 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 well, D.L. Hughley, I didn't know he had beef with him. D.L. was like a former Crip, I think. Is that oh, right? Really? I wouldn't fuck with D.L. Interesting. Oh, yikes! It's on yeah. the DL. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. Not anymore, it's not. Yeah, no, that's uh, no, he's like a he came from the gangs. I think. I mean, Matt, maybe really? fact check that. I, I DL Hughley I seems like sure. such a. I guess he he does have a neck tattoo. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe you got something here. Yeah. Was he a crip? The blood. So. Oh, e oh. Blood. That's, a, that's a big fuck up right there. <laughs> that's like the N word for that. <laughs> yikes! Yeah. I don't think we're supposed to be talking about that. So we should <laughs> well, move it's on, on. It's on Google. Yeah, well, True. Google's not a person with a podcast. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to stab Google. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Google? Which one was that? Was that Bezos? Google? Yeah. No, Bezos uh, is Amazon. Who did Google? Yeah, who did Google? Who started Google? Well, there's Zuckerberg with Facebook. Yeah. And then there's, and there's uh, uh, the other guy. Larry Page. Trump was the president. Who's the CEO now? Well, it's not them now, is it? What's his name? Uh, Apple. Uh, Jobs. He Wasn't was a, it? Who was the guy that... Nate went on his boat and he owned the Sundar. Blazers. Sundar Pichai. No, it's not Sundar. It's my favorite green tea. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hiked Sundar Pucci in uh, Peru. <laughs> oh, yeah. October 2015. I don't think he invented it. We would have heard that name. I'd never heard of Sundar. How did Google, because Yahoo was the one. There was Bing. Remember Bing? Chandler Bing. Yes. yes. Hotbot. 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 Hotbot was another one. Ask Jeeves. That was something. Oh, yeah, Jeeves. Yeah. That was in the Gullman joke, according to AskJeeves.com. 
That didn't last. I, I don't think Sundar invented Google. Was mm. Bill Gates Google? Too soon, Dar. Microsoft. I don't know. Oh, I suck. Well, I think it's Larry Page. Who's that? <laughs> that's that guy. Oh, oh. That guy with a bad haircut. Oh. Yeah, that's tough. It's funny how the richest people have the worst fucking haircuts. Yeah. Zuckerberg. Yeah. That's true. Supercuts. Mm. Yeah. He's got the bangs. He does. It's he, weird. But who not else? looking though? great. Who it's else? Short, I don't think it's a long list. Who was that guy in Zuckerberg, basically? Yeah, that's, that's it, was a, it was a, it was an unearned premise on yeah. my part. Not, not, Beza, not I mean, be, uh, Musk doesn't have great hair. No. So he maybe doesn't. you got something here. Mm. Yeah. Well, Bezos is three. Okay. No one knows this guy. You'd have to, you'd have to bring a picture of him on stage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Well, he, he cleaned it up, I guess. Yeah. He's like the Robbie, uh, uh, what was that guy's name? Fuck. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Robbie Pra? No. Robbie. <laughs> you know Robbie, the golf instructor. He got the haircut. He golf the... instructor. He's a comedian. Oh, he Rob golfs. Bernstein? No, that's a different guy. Uh. Comedian, he teaches golf. Robbie Collier. Oh, Collier. I didn't know he was a golf teacher. I forgot about him. Yeah, Robbie Collier. He, he, he looked like either. that, and then he got his hair all fixed up. He looks great. Really? really? I thought he looked okay before, frankly. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, some women will tell you, if you're going bald, just own it, baby. Yeah. That's what's hot in a man, owning. Yeah, well, Bruce Willis made it kind of cool. Yeah, He looked good bald. Yeah, he Bruce did. Willis, George P- Picard. John Luke. John Luke Picard. Yeah. Uh, Who's Patrick George Picard? Stewart. George Picard is uh, another actor from- um, That's George Pappard. Pappard. Yes, uh, he's in uh, My Breakfast with Tiffany. Statham? Statham's hunk. I think Ben Kingsley kind of has something. Kingsley. He's got. He's Gandhi. Yeah. Sexy Beast. Sexy Beast is solid. Look at all these guys. Jason Black guys are different, though. Jason Canner, sure. Yeah. There you go. Travolta well, went Duval. bald. Alan Lefkowitz. <laughs> the the women are attracted to him. No. Sarah talks about how they're attracted because he's really listening. He's thoughtful and he's listening. He fucked my ex-girlfriend. It was fucked up, man. What? No. Alan fucked my ex. Whoa, he yeah, fucked dude. Judy Gold? And, <laughs> oh, shit. And my mom, dude. <laughs> Alan fucked my mom. Well, no better guy to talk about it with. Who else? Who Give me some other bald dudes. Bald and hot. I mean, Prince M- William. Yeah. Stanley Tucci's kind of cute. Ed Harris is hot. Ed women, Harris has got something. Women like Stanley Tucci for sure. Oh, yeah. I like him. Would mm. you? Yeah. I don't like how he tried to become Bourdain, though. That kind of bugged yeah, me. Yeah, a, a lot of guys tried. I wish he'd kill himself. Uh, what's his face? Uh, what's he's, a, he's a cute name? guy. Hmm. Philip uh, Rosenthal. Phil Rosenthal tried a Bourdain thing. The it manager? Veter loves that show. Really? Yeah, he's Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, people love that show. He has his own show? Yeah, he's yeah. got a, a, a food show. But Netflix. isn't he Ray Romano's manager? No. no he was he was the- Co-creator. The co-creator. Oh, Everybody okay. Loves Raymond. Ray hmm. Romano, I'll say, is the nicest dude The nicest the comic. He's yes. the only famous dude that pops into the cellar and is like, oh, I don't want to bump you. you yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. Everyone, every other famous person is like, I'm going to do an hour and a half. You're going to fucking wait at the table. You're not going to see your family for a while. <laughs> Ray yeah. Romano is literally like, no, just, you know, I don't want to inconvenience you. And you're like, True. Great guy. And hilarious. And funny. Hilarious. Funny it's comic. Nice enough to do Ray Ellen's show. Wow. That's saying something. That's nice. <laughs> not Aruba. No. Okay. He's not going there. No, certainly not. Tell but, your Aruba Tony Wood story. This kills me. Oh, uh, the, the, I told it on Rogan and it bombed, but. Oh, uh, well, we're, we're, we're in, we'll laugh. Uh, <laughs> he, everything goes over his uh, talk about bald hot guys. Oh, yeah. He's he's a bald hot he's guy. He's bald. Yeah. Uh, Tony Woods. <laughs> Tony Woods. I've probably, probably heard this story a million times. Sorry, I'm a little hoarse from sporting events, but. Tony Woods uh, is in Aruba and he's late for every single show. I love him. And so That's hilarious. He's like in the eighth floor, so he's late for every single show. One hundred percent of the show. The show is in the hotel room, but he's yes. late every show. It's in the, the ballroom. So of the hotel. yeah. So Ray Ellen in the hotel. Yeah. Ray Ellen says, "I got an idea. I'll put him in the room across the hall. That way, he doesn't have to find his way. I can just go and get him <laughs> when it's time." Wow. So Ray Allen, the first show of the second week, he goes over, he knocks on the door, and he says, I just gave Dan Natterman the light. And Tony Woods goes, all right, I'll jump in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> He's a classic. It's a two-minute light. <laughs> <laughs> He's a classic, Tony Woods. He really is. He's a, always got his cavassier. Like yes. He's the ladies' man, you know? I feel like I've never connected with him because he's more of a, he's a drinky party guy and we'd never collided then. I feel like mm. if I knew him 10 years ago, we would have gone to some titty bars and drank right. and had fun. But. That guy's got hours of material. He's, oh, a, he's yeah. a funny dude. Yeah. 
Classic. He, and he does hours <laughs> in, in one set. But he, I I love the guy. I'm a fan, but I've met him 500 times. And he's like, hey, who, who are you, a young brother? And I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, we've met. The first 30 times, he was like, it's great to meet you. And I'm like, it hurts every time. I know. Yeah. Every time you say that, it There's a lot of guys bad. like that. Attell was like that for a yep. long time. Uh, Natterman is like that for yeah. quite a while. It's these scatterbrainy kind of guys. Once you get in, you're in, but it takes a minute. Isn't that weird that we probably do that to people? We've probably met young comics, and they're we're like, hey, nice uh, to meet you. And they're like, oh, my God. You're probably right. That's the therapy right there. What do you mean? That you have the awareness to just be like, oh, we've our impact on young comics. Yeah. That's you you being in therapy. Yeah, or it's ego being like, we're those guys now. Maybe. Either way. I'll Either take way. That. Or I'll your take self-awareness. I'll I take know. your interpretation. I took it as ego, but yeah. yeah. Really? Well, it's a, he flipped it. But I think it's also just like the idea of being like, oh, this is our impact. Like we're talking about these people. This is what we do. You know? Sure. Yeah. Well, sure. I do think that because I was talking about this the other day. I remember being at, I went to the New York Film Academy, as did Mark back in 03. You got and I remember right. walking up the village, going to the cellar and like stopping my classmates and being like, that's Dan Natterman. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, Dan Natterman's having a slice of pizza right yes. there. And they're like, what? And I'm like, he's been on The Tonight Show. It's insane. Like literally starstruck because I was like, holy shit, that's Dan Natterman in the wild. Yeah, yeah he's and been he had, on Letterman. Yeah, exactly. He's been a couple late night our, spots. Our buddy James Smith has the best Dan Natterman story. Oh, that's a great where, story. Where he, uh, where he sees Dan Natterman, he goes, oh my God, you're Dan Natterman. You were on Letterman last night. Natterman just sitting on the stoop. He goes, yeah, and look at me now. Look where I am now. I'm on a stoop. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I mean, he's just such a miserable. Well, that's how it was when you you're younger you're like oh you do letterman you're famous the next day you do conan you're a millionaire but you know it's five minutes you're on with uh snooki and uh paula dean and then you go home yeah and that's it do you you're doing better than paula dean right now so ah do you remember the first time uh, you never admit you gotta not admit that was the problem with paula dean she thought she was doing the right thing wait she's wait. like yeah, i've said the n-word you know i'm trying not to and then they're like you piece of shit oh interesting she should have been like no that wasn't me i don't know what you're talking I about i feel like white people canceled her more than black people oh though. they it love was, her, like, i feel course. like a, yeah, I mean, it was like, they were like, no, you fucking bitch. Yeah. There was a lot of memes about, like, the chicken wings are good, though, you know, or whatever it was. <laughs> they love Paula Dean. Do you remember the first person you met who had been on TV? Ooh. Mm. Mine was Paul Nardizzi. I remember being at the Comedy Vault, and he had been on Conan, and he was going on Conan, like, the next day. Wow. Yeah. He was running his set, and I remember going after him, and, like, looking at, like, really, like, looking at yes. him. Yes. And being like... What? You're staring. I was like, this guy is on TV tomorrow. Yes. Wow. And I went on after him and I went like, they just had the best guy on the show and now the worst guy. What? And I remember coming off stage <laughs> and this guy, Artie Januario, who only started a month before me, like, why did you, why would you do that? <laughs> like, he didn't just say, don't do that. He made me answer like, why would you do that? Right. And I was like, well, because I'm like, I'm new and I suck and he's good. And he's like, why would you say that? <laughs> That's just And Boston, I was like, I don't know. Dude. And he's like, don't ever say that. Yeah. Don't tell the audience you're bad. Oh. No, you, like, right. you need those every now and then. You're like, I didn't know that was a bad thing to do. Right. And now I know. It's like one time we did uh, Sac Sacramento years ago. It was my first weekend on the road. With DeRosa. With DeRosa I remember, I remember when yeah. you both were telling me you were doing this. You featuring, I'm hosting, I'm a new comic, and I went up and I had a couple jokes about at my day job, my day job, whatever, and you pulled me aside. You're like, why would you tell him you have a job? And I'm like, because I have a job. And you're like, they think you're a comedian. Be a comedian. And I was uh, like, oh, I didn't know we couldn't have a job. I stand by that. And you buy a ticket and the guy goes up there and he's like, yeah, I work at Sears. You're like, what am I? What, what the fuck? I don't right. know. I see a guy that works at Sears. Yeah, it's almost like you're working against yourself. Yeah, you got to be like, I used to work at Sears. Now I'm making millions here. I'm seeing at the Sacramento Punchline. Never crossed my mind, but I, I still think about that to this day when I'm showering. Sacktown, the Bay Area, and back down. That was, how was yeah, that, that weekend? Right. Great. Oh, yeah, it was great. I remember Bjorn, our manager, left us. And I also remember another moment that I remember. We were, Mark and I were sitting in the pool, and DeRosa came, and he's like pulling his hair out, wondering what he's going to do with his life. And he's like, at some point, i got to move to L.A. I mean, I, we all do, obviously. And I remember being like, move to L.A.? What? Why would I move to L.A.? And he's like, we have to, don't you think? Yeah. And then he was also like, I want to be Woody Allen. And I was like, so do I. He lives in New York. Uh -huh. Not the movies. Yeah. I just wanted to have sex with my daughter. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys, kind of, there was some some budding heads at, at that point. Yeah, DeRozan and I had a lot of touch, but now I think we're cool. I saw him the uh, other day, by the way. DeRozan's like amazing. I he's love him. He did bar. our episode and was amazing on the show. He's great. Yeah, he's like so good. I was really blown away. So funny. He's also amazing on his podcast. Great that pod. I don't listen to, but I watch the, clip, I watch the clips. I die laughing and then I don't listen to it. It's all you need. Good taste is perfect. Yeah, a taste of a taste, taste bud. Mm -hmm. It's hard to it's hard to commit to a comedy podcast when you're a comedian. It is, yeah, it is. 
It's so true. I, I want. I, I don't want to be influenced in any way. I want to just listen to news or sports. I just. I don't want anything that's comedy. Yeah, you don't want to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's, there's did also, we used to date? This sounds familiar. There's also five thousand of them. So you're gonna listen to all of them. You know, I it's know. tough to pick. Yeah, it's also weird to listen to your friends on a podcast. I'm like, I, mean, I could call you guys up on the phone. True. Yeah. True, but I there was once you were on Fitzsimmons and I was alone. I was lonely somewhere, and I was like, "I'll listen to this." Really? Yeah, because if I call you, I gotta think of stuff to say. That's but if, true. If it's a pod, I, you're doing all the work. It's almost like catching up while you're just laying there. Yes. Yeah, that's all right. Sure. Yeah, I don't listen to any. I should. I mean, I literally watch the clips, and I'm like, "This is amazing." Right. I don't know why I wouldn't think to listen to the other 42 minutes, but I never have. Well, I, I sat there and I thought, why I'm with a group of guys. I'm looking at my phone every time I get bored. And I sat there and I thought, why am I looking at my phone? I got these good, good, funny people here. And I realized it's because you don't have to interact. Mm. Interacting is work. Of course. Yeah. You know, listening the, is a whole thing. And listening I'm and going. I'm dying right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, wait, what were you talking about? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it's yeah. good to put that work in. It pays off yeah. and it comes back and it's better. But the easy route is just to scroll. Yes. It's mindless, but it's you never feel good after. No, no. It's, it's like the equivalent of a one-night stand. You're like, what was that? Right. But the scroll does help you not have the awkward moment because everybody wants a break. So it's nice because in the old days, you'd just be sitting there in silence and you'd have to be like, uh, what, 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 where did you get the shirt? Like right. you have to fill it in. But yeah. now it's like, all right, well, look, we're doing phone time. It's a commercial so that's where break. It is nice. It's so a as long as you don't break. overly yeah. overdo it. Right, right, yeah. But I just had that. I was just on a trip with Sarah and my family and it was like, my family hangs out 24 hours a day or whatever, 18 hours a day, mm -hmm. and there's no break at all. So mm -hmm. we're like exhausted, that physical exhaustion of just being on all day. And then you need some booze to soften it a little. Yeah. But well, you don't do that. They're all boozed up, yeah. Is that weird that, uh, you, that they're drinking and you just don't do that? Uh, sorry for just belching on the <laughs> microphone. No, Speaking of booze. don't apologize here. Um <laughs> No, not really. Not anymore. I mean, it's, that's the most triggering for me is family because it's like that's how they connect and they're yeah. drinking and it's obviously the stress of family. So it would be nice. But um, no, not really. It's the same. My, so. uh, my lady's from Boston and all they do, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, whatever it is, I'll go visit and it's just 10 a.m. Somebody cracks that first beer and then they go, oh, OK. And now they're all drinking and I will take walks because I need a break. I need a breather. And they're like, give me shit about the walks. They're like, what mm. are you doing out there? Who, who are you talking to? Who are you walking with? I'm like, I'm just taking a walk. They're like, why are you taking a walk? And they kind of take it personally. And I'm like, no, it's I'm a weirdo. And and I, I imagine it's the same way. Yeah, no, Sarah hates it because like her family is so different than my family. Her family, you hang out for like two hours and you talk about like South African politics. Like her mother's <laughs> like the smartest person on the planet. They're literally like having an in-depth discussion of like 1300s West African politics and I'm like, I'm like Costanza. I'm like, what about sports? You like sports? <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm like, I'm just yeah. dying. You're just like uh, Trevor Noah or something? I, I don't have know. literally nothing to Buzz. add. But then they all go off into their separate things. Yeah. We'll go for a bike ride and a run. Everyone goes to their own mm. room and watches their own TV. And then they like reconvene. My family, there's no intellectual conversation whatsoever, but it's, it's all day long. Yeah, that would kill me as a kid. Yeah, she's dying. But I'm like that too. Uh, now when we go on hangs, you'll see. I'll be like, where, where the fuck? Where's Sam? Why is Sam writing? Why isn't he sitting here talking with <laughs> right, us? Right, right. Like, with Sacramento, we did that. You're like, I noticed you never write. I'm like, we're hanging out. <laughs> Why would I write? I'm a big alone time yeah. guy. I like to, I like to kind of have a routine and and uh, wake up and have yeah. my, make my coffee and to sit at the computer and and go through the paper and and try to come up with premises. I. I Time, hanging too much stresses me out. I get I, it. I'm the same way. I'm that way. But then when you're with family, that's why right now I feel like fucked. You're fried. Because I'm like, I've just been hanging for like, and then before that I was on vacation sharing a house with a family. So I've been like Oof. with people close quarters for like 11 days. And I was like, come straight to a podcast. Yeah, believe That'll me, I don't want to be here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, now that I'm here, it's great. It is fun. It's always, you always dread to do the thing, but then once you're at the thing, it's usually... That's all of life. That's, That's all. all you got to get over that hump. That's what I'm saying with yeah. the phone. Put it down, and there's that hump of awkwardness, but you get over it, and it's better. Hump of awkwardness. That's the my high school story. <laughs> Uh, can we talk been... about your movie coming out? Yeah, let's talk about it. It's coming. It's coming soon. I'm We're... I'm proud of you, and I'm excited to see it, man. Oh, thanks. It might suck. Um, <laughs> I watch it, and I'm like, oh, God. Why? 
Well, it's like there's sentimental things, and I'm like, are we just asshole? Because we have so many cynical comedy fans. They're going to watch it, like, yeah. look at him pretending to cry. What a fucking And homo. You've, you've trashed so many movies that it could come back to you. Well, that's the problem. I have to wipe my entire movie <laughs> podcast and half of our podcast. Yeah. I'm like a cunt. I'm, I'm like, I'm on the record. Robert Redford's a piece of shit. Right. He sucks. I, he's dog shit. I stand by it. But now I'm in a movie, and... Uh, do you, do you, you don't like Redford? I think he's bad. I think Why? he's actually bad. I think that he's... Overrated? It's so hard. He's just, he's just not as good. He's just outclassed by... He's no Paul Newman. He's just oh, a movie star. Well, now, yeah, yeah. He's like a handsome guy. He's relatively flat. And everyone's like, well, what about The Sting? And it's like, The Sting is great. Sting is it's a like good movie. One of the best scripts ever. He's got Newman there. And it's a beautiful movie. Uh, same with Butch Cassidy. Yeah. But he's just Redford. He's not great. I shouldn't say he's bad. It's just funny to say he sucks. Sure. But he's very... He I watched the suck. one on the boat. It's just him. <laughs> I think we got a Redford fan here. That well, is bad. I think, I think the one on the boat is bad. Yeah, Lost it, look, it looked awful. <laughs> it's really, really bad. I was like, how about Castaway with an older guy? Is right. that good? He no. just doesn't have range. He's not a rangeful actor. Right. I, I think All the President's Men is fucking boring. Oh, I'm, I'm, it was a little boring. It's a. It's just... like It's a slow movie for the 70s, which yes. means it's really fucking slow. Yeah. Yeah. But I just mean, like, Redford, obviously, he's better than me. I suck. I'm the, my movie sucks. But Robert Redford, he doesn't <laughs> you have, have to do that of, now that you're a filmmaker. He doesn't have that performance. I mean, he doesn't, like, Pacino, you watch Dog Day and the Godfather movies. You're like, I don't care what he's Dog done. Dog Day is top five for I don't. Me. Same here. I don't care Perfect. what he does with spiky wow. hair and the yelling and the fucking, like, boo -boo, whatever. You let he can go. do all that. He's yeah. got Dog Day and he's got the two Godfather movies. And Cruisin's also great. And I mean, the movie's not great. Serpico. He's great. Serpico. The Another Insider, one. one of my favorites. Yep. He's just, he's just yeah. so great in those. And, those like, insider. obviously, De Niro and uh, Paul Nicholson. Newman and Nicholson and Dustin Brando. Hoffman. So Redford gets Denzel. put in this class because he's such a movie guy. Right. Interesting. And he's just, he's very flat. He's very Robert Redford. I think the same way about Clooney. What about also. a. Oh, what, I'm a Clooney fan. What about his directing? It's embarrassing. Because A River Runs Through It, I think, is solid. Yeah. Um, I think he directed A River Runs Through It. Yeah, he's directed some stuff. He's directed uh, a couple other things. I think he's good at that. I mean, okay. how hard is that? Who, who, what, you, you have a lot of controversial movie takes. You have like, you hate, uh, you hate Fight Club. I don't hate it, but I think it's very silly. And I think if you watched it more recently, you'd be like, this is pretty silly. It's pretty cool, though, too. <laughs> it's got some cool things. It's pretty ridiculous. And a lot of it doesn't make sense. The twist does not quite make sense. Right. What, that he's actually Tyler Durden? Yeah, there's like moments where they're both there and reacting. People are reacting to both uh -huh. people in way. It, 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 oh, interesting. I can't explain it properly right now, but because I haven't watched it enough. But it doesn't quite makes sense it's not great and i think it's like this bro fucking jerk off to it like that's uh, that's me right there i'm right. like anti-corporate <laughs> it doesn't really add up or make much sense what are, what are other like hot movie takes i don't know i don't have as many as uh ron on ron the man you want hater. here i get i get a lot of heat for hater. being like a piece of shit guy who hates everything but i like like People always give me shit on our pocket. They're like, you just want to be contrarian. I'm like, my favorite artists are Pearl Jam and Bruce Springsteen. My favorite movie is Goodfellas. And Forrest Gump. I'm like, Forrest Gump, Goodfellas, <laughs> Casino. I mean, I, I mean, you know, Apollo 13. Right. I'm, like, I'm not exactly Schindler's List. These are pretty like, like Tom Petty. standard great is movies. Bruce. Yeah, I'm, I'm like the Stones. I'm a diehard. I'm like, I'm not some asshole who's like, I only like bad brains. Well, the thing, was, the thing that triggers people is the Sopranos. That triggers me. He yeah. hates the Sopranos. That triggers me. That's well, but. I Show feel like it. I've made cases that I've gotten people to give um, in a little bit. Oh, hum a few bars. Give us Well, a, we've talked about it. One, okay, we'll tell him. the show is sitcom -y. Like, there's, like, sitcom -y jokes. There's joke jokes, which I don't care for. Uh -huh. Like, set up punch. Like yeah, I hate, as can, a comedian, I hate jokes. You can feel. the worst. <laughs> well, I don't like it on a, what's supposed to be a gritty fucking show. But I've talked about this in so many places, and I get yeah. so much hate. So I feel like everyone can hear this somewhere else. But my main thing is <laughs> Stevie Van Zant. And Polly Walnuts are cartoon characters. Right. Take you out of it. Ridiculous. And I cannot, I can't abide. I can't, you can't, 
you, people put it with like Goodfellas and The Godfather and shit. I don't do that. I put it above. Whoa! I mean, <laughs> but this is what I, I have to say. Broken. This is where I have to make a compromise with yeah. people. I don't care for the medium. I don't. I'm not a TV guy. You're not. That's I don't true. like TV. I don't like. Episodic. Will you at least give that Gandolfini is incredible? He's great. All, He's right. Great. All right. That's but something. like Stevie Van Zant, who also happens to be the guitarist in my favorite band, which yeah. takes away. Yeah. Which, Norton had a great line. He'd be like, "If Tony Iommi, however you say his name, from fucking Black Sabbath." Like walked into like Seinfeld and was like, hey. <laughs> like it takes you out of it. First of all, he's a very famous guitarist and a very yeah. favorite man, but he's wearing like a rubber wig. The wig, and is he's bad. like, hey Tony. He's, I mean, he's, he's you can admit that he's silly. He's over the top. He's I, over the but, top. But he has moments where he's where he's heavy and he's good in it though. So I mean. he's over the top. And then Polly Walnuts, who's just like, it's, oh, t- yeah. And I'm like, right. what, but he's what is this? Paulie's I think he, incredible. And Polly's in a lot of mob movies. But it's over Broadway, and one of my favorite comedies of all time. Oh, uh, great movie. But these are straight up comedies. Yeah, yeah. So right, it's different. Right. Like tonally, it's different. Sure. And uh, I haven't watched all the episodes, whatever. We watched the one on the podcast where like Chris like sits on a dog, and he's supposed to be like a uh, junkie, but he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't look junkie. And then there's this a straight up vaudevillian comedy scene in it. So I don't understand the, the intervention. Thing. But Goodfellas is yes, funny. It's hilarious, funny it's hilarious but but Goodfellas is funny because it's so genuine. That's what right. makes it. It's Situational. so real and it's so funny. Funny how? Like exactly. It's just so pitch perfect that it makes it hilarious. All and right. them, I think, are like going for joke jokes. But I haven't watched the whole show. And obviously, I'm a piece of shit because I got three people ever that have agreed with me on this. Wow, thing. really? What, what, yeah, and no other hot takes. Like you, you hate, you hate seven. You hate Fight Club. I don't hate them. I just oh, think they're very silly. Are you a, a David Fincher fan guys. though? I like Zodiac. Zodiac. Zodiac is one of my favorite movies. Social Network ever. Social Network, I don't love. I think it's mm. overrated. And also, like, these movies that are based on, like, real things and just take liberties, I find so uh-huh. ridiculous. But Zuckerberg does seem like a terrible person, at least. Oh, certainly, yeah. So at least if you're going to, like, make someone seem shitty, at least it's a dude who seems shitty. Yeah. It's yeah. not as bad as, like, Rudy. That's, like, the worst one ever. Yeah. The coach, Dan Duvine. Did you ever hear that story? Uh-uh. They, they wanted to make him, like, the heavy. They needed, like, a bad guy. So they made him. And they called and they told him, like, we're going to make you a little bit more negative and less likable. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then they made the scene where everyone turns in their jerseys. And he's, like, refusing to let Rudy play. And he's uh. like, that's not even what. That's, I made him play. I made him. That was me. I was the head coach. That's frustrating. That never happened. And then even the scene in the end when he's like, don't put him in, like the coordinator throws yeah. him in. He's yeah, like, well, I put need, him in. I, like, I, a, I did that. You, with movies, you need an arc. You need bad guys. So they take liberties in these stories. I mean, I, Mark and I were talking about the show Winning Time on HBO, which I like the show, but they make Jerry West, they portray him in such a fucked up way. They make a lot of his takes just wrong. And I'm like, that's one of the great basketball geniuses of all time. Right. Like, the guy literally traded for Kobe. Right, the wow. guy traded Vladi Divac for Kobe. Like he signed seventeen-year-old Kobe. I know, and yeah. he signed Shaq. He he knew Kobe was going to be a Jordan-level player. He, wow. he all the genius moves he made, and like I feel like every episode he's like, "We got to get Elgin Baylor to be coach." I'm like, show one of the smart moves he made. He's such a basketball genius. Right. He's throwing chairs through windows. He's like the angry guy. That's it. That's but his also whole he's character. angry because he was a psycho competitor. And then you see him interviewed in real life, and you're like, he's like a soft-spoken, warm man. <laughs> Yeah. With no, depression. Who's but, like a, got a dark side he, own, he owns, you know? But guys like Dan Devine, the coach at Notre Dame, he has to live the rest of his life. People being like, you piece of shit. I know. You should have played that five foot guy. <laughs> and he's like, I did. That was me. What are you talking about? They should make a Sandusky movie where he's just like really cool. <laughs> 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 he's I just handing out. We took some liberties, man. He's handing out sponges in the shower. He's nice. <laughs> he's giving out towels. Um, but yeah, I love The Godfather. I love Dog Day Afternoon. I love, you know, Dog Day Afternoon's a top five movie of all time to me. But I what's think it's, it's, most? It's, it's Dog Day Afternoon is like it's funny. It's fucking ahead of its time. The way they deal with that uh, trans the lady? trans thing is like incredibly ahead of its time. Oh yeah, it's got so many different like modes where you're like you're laughing one a minute you're fucking sad for them the next it's and you inc- feel for the guy who's it's, robbing a bank no it's like magical it's, it's like one of the best movies ever it's top five without question to me yeah but what's also, great about- also the best new york movie ever probably. oh yeah Brit attica that's, that's a little insane but <laughs> you don't think so no wait hold on i want to hear what the, well the what i'm just question. gonna say is i like what i like about you is you get berated 
with all these takes of yours and these opinions of yours, and you stick with it. I would have caved a, a, a year and a half ago, like, all right, I watched Sopranos again. It's good. Just so you leave me alone. Yeah. But well, you I mean, hang in there. I mean, I, I, now at this point, I just have to lean into it. But, yeah, um, lean. Lean. But yeah, people get very upset. The Sopranos yeah, yeah. thing is like serious business. People no, it bothers like, me for sure. I, it, me I'm like, I can't believe I have a smart, hilarious friend who thinks The Sopranos is bad. It's not that, again, I had to change my thing. I just don't care for TV. I hate episodic. I hate that it's like, okay, so eight more years of this. Just give me two hours, three hours, solve the problem. Is it because you hate fat? Is it because there's like a movie, it's like you're in and out, it's every scene counts, whereas in there, there was well, it's, Have you seen his ex? It's just so... <laughs> um, I, it's just so... Uh, like put on it's like they so i can feel the writing i can feel the writer's mm -hmm. room i can feel them being like we need an issue okay what's today's problem uh -huh. let's come up with a problem we need an arc and okay let's punch it up you punch it up like i can feel the i can see the punch up mm -hmm. that's a joke again these two characters are just so fucking ridiculously over the top that it takes me out of the whole thing i'm like what mm -hmm. what is the tone of the show it's so silly to me mm -hmm. but tv in general like I started watching Ozarks. Yeah, and I, don't I like love Jason Bateman. I yeah, think he's yeah. like fantastic. He's great. And I was like, this show's great. But I got five episodes in, and I'm like, so it's going to keep being that we solve it, and then a new thing props up, and then I'm like, there's four more seasons of this. So every just, day it's like this is yeah. an impossibility, and then we don't solve it. But it's TV. That's the only format you can do with TV because you have to have multiple seasons and make more money. So I think TV format is the problem. That's well, a hilarious. That's a hilarious critique of TV. Oh, so there's just going to be more. <laughs> but that's the thing is, but that's exactly the point is yeah. like they have to come up with stuff. Right. A movie, they came up with a story. Yeah. Here's the story. This is a story about how my life got flipped upside down <laughs> whatever you know what i mean you're like we're gonna tell a story about you know two guys robbing a bank uh -huh. and one guy's robbing a bank for his to raise money for his wife to have a fucking uh sex whatever and yeah. okay and the cops are gonna come and that's the resolution soprano sure. tv they're like okay here's a story and it's 10 episodes got it that was great we're selling merch come up with 10 more stories yeah shit okay let's oh, maybe what if he gets an intervention wouldn't it be funny if he's on heroin? Yeah. Just because we need something. We, we need, need something. material. Yeah. Are, That's why are, comedians suck after 20 what are, years. What are TV, sure, We're all this, heading that way, by the way. We are. Yeah, right. It's all downhill, baby. What, uh, are said. there TV shows that you like? I mean, obviously Seinfeld, Curb, right? Well, comedy is a little bit different, but not many. Seinfeld, I think, is like... This is the thing. People, again, people are like, you just contrarian. I'm like, I think Seinfeld's the best thing ever of all time. Although yeah. I do think the first two and last two seasons are horrendous. There you go. Horrendous? That's another controversial Not statement. horrendous. Not horrendous, but... They're not... The first is tough. They're finding it. They're finding their footing. They don't sure. know what the hell they're doing yet. And then the last one's Larry David leaves, so it gets super cartoony. Seasons so. eight and nine I have real issues with. I just... I love it, but I hate it. Also. How about like old school Simpsons? Simpsons I love too. Like yeah. I think like seasons three through eight are like unbelievable. But again, you can agree that it flipped. See, yeah, Simpsons well, got shitty. I mean, I, yeah, I don't think it's easy to maintain a, a level of excellence for 33 seasons. I yeah, think that's pretty right. tough. But that's why a lot of these things is like totally. just call it quits. That was great. Yeah, The Office, British. You're in, you're out. Everybody loved it. But I love the British. I love the American Office. I hate the last four. The first four seasons of American once Office. Once, once the love interests get together, it's always kind of over. yeah. It's always yeah. the will they won't they once it's gone. You're kind of like eh. Well, that's, I hate Joe yeah. but Steve Carell, I think, might be like. Top five funniest people ever. Oh, he's, he's just every second. And he's and a magical Rain Wilson performer. too. I mean, they're Ooh. like the guy who plays Dwight. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's, oh Rain Wilson. I just yeah. understood. He's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. he's good. Um, Great I love show. Curb. Yeah, there's a lot of bad Curb, but I love Curb. Cheers, I love. There's a lot of bad Cheers, but I love Cheers. Uh, You're pretty mainstream. I know. That's what I said. I'm like, I'm like a basic bitch. I don't know what you're talking about. I know the guy's got Starbucks and, and New Balance. I know. On. That's what I'm saying. I'm, like, I'm, I'm a hack. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not some. I just have a couple takes. We're going to Cheesecake Factory after this. I love the cheesecake. Yeah, I got gift cards cheesecake. in my backpack. What uh, <laughs> cheesecake rules? So, but you're worried about the movie? I've heard it's great. I've heard. Your oh, thanks. Great. I think it's good. I am. It's hard because you get so fucked up. You know how it is. It's like watching your own stuff. You're like, it's not even like watching your because at least in stand up, you're like, they're, it's killing. I don't give a fuck. The right. movie is like, uh, you're not getting an honest opinion, really. Yeah. Um, and it's tough with a movie because you don't get multiple tries. With stand-up, like, a bit can work out over five months. This is like, here it is. It's yeah. done. We hope. Yeah. It's like the Seinfeld thing. It's like, you watch a bad movie, it's an hour and a half. You're in a bad movie, it's like a year and a half. Right. Wow. <laughs> right. Um, but I think it's pretty good. I think it'll resonate. It's not particularly funny. We took out a lot of the comedy. There's not a lot of hilarity mm. in it. It's pretty 
uh, dramatic, but I think it's fun. I think the music is great. I think the act, the people that play my parents are like amazing. Really, it's really like the guy that plays my dad is like unbelievable. So were you and and forgive me if I'm I'm prying, but were you back there with the headphones on, the director's chair, the video village, you know, with the big bullhorn and the beret, going cut it, redo it, turn it around, you know, <laughs> cut the tape, whatever, check the gate, all that shit, lock it up. Um, I was doing a lot of that stuff as a bit. I'm doing it. I did it the way you were doing it, which was fun. I had a great time. I kept. Well, it was funny because I'd be like, "Check the gate," yeah. and then Louis's like, "We should actually check the gate." <laughs> um, but it was fun to use all my uh, film school horseshit. Yes, that I never used. You um, throw the, uh, the the clipboard down. What are you doing out there? I need a motion. Come um, on. There were times like that. It was exciting because I mean I'm an executive producer writer, so there was stuff like that. But like with the scenes that I wasn't in, I did have the headset, which was really fun. Wow. And we were watching on video Village, which was really exciting. Wow. And that was like the funnest part is not being in it because you're like watching it, and the the people playing my parents. Those are the scenes that I'm not in are like having the seat and you're, we're like punching each other. I mean, it is magical because you have it with stand-up where you write a bit and then you do it and it works, which is like special. But a movie, it's like Louie and I were sitting, saying, then he says this, what if he says that? Yeah. And then this will happen. And then somebody's acting it out and they're nailing it. And you're like, oh my wow. God. And you can't make Man. noise. So you're literally like, we're doing this. Wow. And then you say cut and you're like, unbelievable. Movie magic. And it was magical. And uh, they're unbelievable. They're so good. Um, I'm worried I stink. And um, I just wanted to make sense to people, but I think it does. And everyone's been really complimentary. So we'll see. Yeah. I bet it's great, man. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I think you'll like it. I think it's up your uh, asshole. There you so, go. I hope so. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, this therapy, there's, a, there's an Allen character in Ooh. there, and Bobby Kelly is, plays the guy. He's great. Louis, does Louis play Allen? Louis plays my therapist. Oh, yeah. wow. And he's great. You forget how good of an actor Louis is. He's really great. Yeah. Uh, I was watching uh, American Hustle on a flight recently, and I was just cracking. I forgot Louis's in it. And oh, I was that's just right. Cracking up. You know, those scenes with Louis and Bradley Cooper are fucking hilarious. He yeah. had a run of, of a couple big, big blockbusters. He was yeah. in Trumbo. Yeah, yeah. Trumbo. That was, yeah. That was a solid movie. Some Woody Allen movie, too. Yeah. yeah. He was in um, the big one, the one that won an Academy Award there. Yeah, I can't think of the name right now. Blue Blue Jasmine. Blue Jasmine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Um, so, yeah, he's great. And um, Sarah's in it. She's great. And uh. a lot of it's like very real and like it's. It's raw. It's a little nerve wracking because my family, the family stuff makes you nervous. Yeah, because there's a scene where I like snap on my family and I'm like, "You all suck. You're pieces of uh, shit. You're idiots." But it's not my family, but it looks like my family. <laughs> it's literally about like a New York guy who goes to Maine for the Fourth of July every year and is sober. Right. Um, oh boy, a little on so, the nose. It's yeah. been on the note, but you you know you write what you know. But um, sure. So, but the family is not like in the movie. The mother's like a sociopath. My mother's very sweet, great mom, Deb. But, yeah, Deb. Um, so there's that too. So it's it's nerve wracking, and it's got to be seen by a lot of people. It's you know it's scary to put your shit out there. It you is, but the you whole did it, thing man. out in the out the yeah. cheese is out in the wind. I mean, yeah. this is it. They get to pick and poke, and this sucked, and that sucked, or I like that. I mean, that's that's very ballsy and very vulnerable. And it's very scary, and uh, also it's like, who's this? Then you just worry about the people that are like, who is this guy? Making a movie with Louis? Let's look into him. And oh, then it's, yeah, you know, Mark and I, you know, that's a whole talking about fucking kids for 25 <laughs> minutes and come in my face and, you know, eat my that's, dad's ass. That's our best stuff. And they're going to be like, what the hell's wrong with these <laughs> yeah, guys? I know. So that is a little scary also. But you got to live. I think it's a good movie. I think it'll resonate. And I think it's the kind of movie I like. It's like, a, you <laughs> that's know. That's Mark's response to fucking kids. You got to live. You got to live, damn it. <laughs> well, I forget. Tight it, hole. <laughs> it's weird because, you know, I have nieces and nephews. I go, my buddy Derek, I hang out with his kids. And like, you know, they're five and nine. And I'm like running around wrestling. And people are like, aren't you the guy that says, ends your podcast with fuck a kid? I know. What's going on here? And you're like, well, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. Yeah. I know, I forget sometimes. Like, I made a Jelaine Maxwell joke at the dinner table, and my niece is like, who's Jelaine Maxwell? <laughs> now my sister has to explain it to her, and I'm like, oh, God, I stink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that says I gotta learn something. She said it in a good way. She said, "You know how how you know you have a family who loves you very much." And she goes, "Yeah." She's like, "Well, she took uh, she she preyed on people who didn't have that." I was like, "That's a pretty good job." Wow, uh, that's a pretty good that's good parenting. Yeah, very good parenting. Yeah. Great parent. Jesus, I mean, just Lane also has good experience with children. <laughs> but yeah, that's tough. What uh, being a parent is hard. But I mean, dude, you're you have all these awesome things coming out. What, 
the movie. You have a stand-up special on YouTube. Yeah, the special comes out soon. I don't know when this comes out, but April 29th. Right there. Oh. That's what's well, out right out. now. Okay, great. <laughs> it's been out for a month. A I month? hope you've watched it. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, it came out April 29th. It's out April 29th. It's out now. Go watch it. There you watch go. Watch it again if I you was haven't. there at the tape, and it was, it was an incredible special. Yeah, it was really fun. It was yeah. great. I'm excited. I think it was good. But I got to say, I haven't watched it because they sent it to me, and I watched like 20 minutes, and I just get sick to my stomach, yeah, and I was yeah. like, it's perfect. It gets harder and harder to edit your own shit. Yeah, I does. go crazy. I'm kind of like, can someone else just do this? That's what I Which do. Which is I crazy. I don't want to deal with it. No, I can't. So I it's might hard be to surprised. Watch shit. The night it comes out, I might be like, what the fuck? But it's a catch twenty two because you want it to be perfect and your your vision, but it, you also can't watch it. So you got to just suck it up and watch it. Yeah, because you don't want them to make some weird edit that you weren't approving of. Well, at least with stand up, I can be like, the show went well, so as long as it looks like the show, yeah, it'll be pretty good. Little things bug me though, and special like sometimes they'll do like the side shot too much, and I'm like, who is this for? Right, right. it's like right. a fucking mug shot. No one wants to watch. I want dead on. That's the obvious. Yes. Yeah. I think the more, I think people, we've talked about this a bit before, but the more innovative you try to get with a special, the worse it gets. Yeah. I really think stand-up, that's what's so great about stand-up is it's just stand-up. It's just, just present it. That's the show. It's raw. You don't want Quentin Tarantino directing a stand-up special. No. We don't need, no. I mean, maybe he would know how to just do it in a minimalist way, but like you want, Anytime that you notice the direction in a comedy yes, special, yes. Much, it's taken away from the material. That's how I feel. The director should be like a referee in a sporting event. Yeah. You only mm -hmm. notice it if it's you're like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. you should just be like, that was great. Yeah, yeah, good point. You know, no one's like the Patriots Rams Super Bowl. Those refs really nailed it. The I, first one. Second one was shit. <laughs> I think uh, Chris Rock kind of fucked himself with that. Uh, what was that special where he did three cities? <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. It was never scared. Wasn't kill it? the messenger. No, no, no. Kill oh, the kill messenger. the messenger. Yeah. But it was like it might have been great material, but it was. I'm in Johannesburg. I'm in Harlem. I'm in whatever. And you're like, ah, I'm I'm off. This is off. Yeah. I'm not focusing on the. Well, he the tried act. a new thing. I mean, I, I yeah. respect him for trying. I heard Rock say once to the seller, he goes, "Every stand-up special should be like an iPhone. Like, I want a new feature." And I'm like, "That's how he approaches it." No. I, mean, I I disagree mm. too, but that's his approach. I mean, it's like sure. I mean, he's. He's not just original with his stand-up. He's original with the, the you know, how it's, uh, you know, going to be seen. So I, I, I appreciate that. But you know, uh, I, I, I thought Tambourine was was more my speed. You know, than I just, uh, the other one. I yeah. just think a stand-up special should be a presentation of the stand-up, the act. Yeah. So it should be bare bones. Uh, that's how I felt doing this. I just did the second one at the same venue because I'm like, and then there's a big giant stupid sign. But I'm like, but the material is what makes it different. Yeah. It's kind of like the Beatles. They have three different singers, or four different singers, but you know it's the Beatles because it sounds like the Beatles. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's a perfect analogy, but no one's like, <laughs> who the fuck is this? Yeah. Who's this guy singing? I never heard of this guy. True. Like, that's another Beatle. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm, I'm with you on the bare bones. I think it's like you work so hard to make these jokes <laughs> land and, and make them, you know, work in every single state that's really like how you tour we're like this better joke and this joke better work in like florida yep. ohio yep. san francisco you know and then if someone tries to do too much with the taping you're just kind of like you ruined two years of my life <laughs> <laughs> well, i just watched a later office episode american office and like they're doing like these crazy the cuts are too fast and they're like zooming on every shot and i'm like i'm like discombobulated yeah exactly yeah. there's jokes just give me the jokes that's yeah. what i'm saying i don't want paul greengrass directing my next special <laughs> yeah and i always say uh we i think we've said this stand up is the best is listening like you're in a long car ride and yeah. you're just hearing the audio you are sucked in and i think with a special it's it should be yeah, bare bones, as you say, because the the audio is really what's important. That, that's how I got into stand up is albums. Is like yes. you know Chris Rock's you know Roll with the New, Chris Rock's you know his albums, that E Murphy albums, uh, Mitch Hedberg, Dave Attell. Like, oh the, yeah, those were albums. I'm like this makes, me, and you're just listening, and you're like this is. It's almost like the equivalent of like people are like I, I listen to baseball games, you know. Right. Yeah. There's a beauty to that. I love listening to baseball, but I think that what's so great about albums. Is when you're watching a special. This is what's so depressing about comedy specials: is there's nothing that it, it can't come anywhere close. It's it's at least thirty percent worse than the actual live yes show easily. But with audio, you're in the audience because there's no visual, so you're just that you close your eyes and you're in the audience. You're getting it the same way they are. You're just mm -hmm. getting the audio and you're laughing with the audience. But on visual, 
you can see that you're outside the room. Mm. So you're watching people watch a special. Like there is a divide where there's not a divide with audio, if that makes sense. I get it. I get it. It taps in more with audio. You're right. Especially with the video, too. You're like, look at the outfit. Look at the hot girl in the front row. What's that thing? Is that brick? Or what is that? Molding? What is that? You know, you're off. Right. You're already seeing other shit and it's distracting and nothing more... Bad for comedy than distractions. Yeah, too bad Spotify removed all our shit. Nah, yeah, well, they weren't paying us those cunts. Can you? You can still listen though. I'm an Apple Music guy, so I've never used Spotify. But you can also still buy the album and download That's it true. to your phone, right? Yeah. Go back to buying record if you're listening at home. It'd be nice. Buy some albums, please. We all have six. Don't you miss consuming? I, mean, I had this conversation in uh, The Worst Person in the World, which is an amazing movie. Just saw it. But they, they I miss consuming thing. Like now. Like, Band of Horses is the first band I got into post-holding a CD. Like, I used to consume the lyrics, the producer, the band. I knew every band. Yes. Band of Horses, one of my favorite bands. I don't even know the name of most of the songs. Right. Because you just have it streaming, and you're like, oh, here's this song. Yes. Before you'd, like, know the title, you'd look at the record of the CD. Yeah. CD. And just be like, okay, that's track one. I know that track title. I know who produced it. I know who plays what on what. Totally. I mean, I think you're. I think that just comes with you. Have too much. We're looking at our phone. We're looking at this. We got too much going on. Where before you'd hold a record and read the back. You'd look at the art. You'd unfold it. I used to work at Blockbuster. I would just stare at the movie covers all day. Yeah. And it was fun. And then you flip it over and you're like, that's a director. He directed that too. But yeah, now it's just like, give me more, more, more. I already watched that. Who's next? I don't know who directed Ozark. Yeah, we we. Just digest too quickly now. Yes. It's like it's like the credits start and the next thing starts and like I'm like I want to see the credits. I oh, hate yeah. that you can't even watch the credits. I want to see the credits. I want to know who is who. Yes, right. please watch the credits of my movie. I'm all over those credits. There you go. Very exciting. <laughs> but yeah, the special's out. It's out right now. It's called uh, this year's material. It's on YouTube, <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's hopefully oh, it's got too. tons of views. It'll get there. We'll see. I'm but, a little nervous because uh, it's going to be great. Why? And big. Well, because the last one was on Comedy Central's YouTube, which has ah. two million, whatever you call it. I, I feel like I'm 150 years old. I'm like followers, subscribers, yeah. people, peeps, whatever it's called. Right, right. right. And Cult I have like 20,000 or something like that. So hopefully people watch it. It'll and build. Like it. If It'll... it's good, it's good. That's the beauty of YouTube. If the it's the closest we get to a meritocracy. But it's good. But it does it. But. This is where it's tricky, though, because it's not just good, it's good, because you have to get into the algorithm. Sure. It can be great and not make it in, well, like we'll the Comedy Central one. And, and you just will have to do your, you have to do a fucking million podcasts now. I know, I hate That's the how podcast. It, it's brutal. I like seeing you guys. No, I feel the same way. I tell Mark every week, I'm like, man, I'm podcasted out. I want to wake up and just write jokes and just kind of take walks and do It'd that nice. shit. Yeah. I, but like the, the amount of talking we have to do now is like, it's bad for art. It's well, bad. Right. And it's bad for your career. Like Colin says it. He's like, we're living. He's like, it's the funniest thing of all time that like we're living in a time where you can get ruined for anything you say. And every comedian literally records everything he says. I know. Well, hopefully it dilutes it a little bit, you know? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. There's enough horrible shit being said that it's hard to keep up. That's yeah. our only hope is like, yeah, but I've had like, I've said that like eight hours worth of saying that. <laughs> yeah. I said the N word a million times. It's all right. It's yeah, down. I didn't slip up. That's like who I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, the problem is when it's not just, hey, he said this. It's when you get something and then they go, hey, this guy said this. Like a Shane Gillis. Right. You get an SNL. Nobody nobody cared about the horrible shit he said before that. But when you get the SNL, they're like, now we got you. Right. Mm -hmm. That light just burned out. Jeez. Fun Did fact. I it swear on? to God, it was... Wasn't that on? It was or... a piece. I don't know. Okay. It's not like super illuminating, so it's hard to know. It's like The Godfather 2. You're right, though. I mean, I do think... We Might Be Drunk is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? For me, working out or buying some new sneakers is an investment in myself. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. We're in therapy. We go to the same guy. It's necessary Clean out the garbage. Your head has all these horrible thoughts. Splice in your childhood, traumatic experiences. You're a wreck. You're a mess. You need therapy. Get out the garbage. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for a haircut, or even trying therapy, you're your greatest asset. So invest time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. Tell them how. 
BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Maybe you got a weird boil on your face or something. Mm. You're weird, you know, you don't want to see that. You're all set. Yep. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. We Might Be Drunk is sponsored by BetterHelp and listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash drunk. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash drunk. You got to do this. It's, it's therapy. Very important. Take care of yourself. It's going to change your life. Here, here. Bear, bull, frozen concentrated orange juice futures contracts. With all uh, the jargon, with all the jargon flying around, it can be hard to figure out how to start investing, right, Mark? You got that right. I'm clueless and I need help. Getting your money right is easier with SoFi, the first investing platform to offer stocks, ETFs, automated investing, and cryptocurrency to all in one app. I mean, Mark, that we need help. We need help yeah, with this, finally. Don't we? Yeah, this is this is heavy stuff, and uh, everybody's getting into it, but us, we're we're missing out. So this is really good. Have you done crypto before or no? I have, and I, I never know what I'm doing. I always buy the wrong thing. I need a friend to help me and take and hold my hand. So this this is for me. Uh, I mean, this this is holding your hand, dude. Whether you're eager to start investing or you already know the ropes, SoFi has your back. No commissions on trading stocks and ETFs, and no account fees or hidden fees. Uh, wow. And they're complimentary. Yeah, their complimentary financial planners are ready to help with any questions. Whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to do next, I mean, this is this is for us. Safe for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. Cut through the jargon and make it easier. Uh, investing with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash drunk. That's S-O-F-I.com slash drunk and learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities LLC. Member FINRA SIPC. You guys are the best. Give it a shot. Can't wait. I'm going to sign up today. SoFi. Hey, folks, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Manscaped. Oh, yeah. Set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code DRUNK for 20% off plus free shipping. Holy hell. I love Manscaped. I use the ball wash. I shave with the uh, the lawnmower. It's good stuff. It gets it in tight. I keep it in my travel bag. I just, whatever I need it, it's all there. You got the crop preserver, crop reviver. Uh, you got the uh, lawnmower 4.0. It's got a light on it, for Christ's sakes. I love this thing. <laughs> you love it. They even, uh, they, sh they have a travel bag. I still use boxer briefs are great. And uh, the ultra premium body wash is great for Manscaped. Love Manscaped. I used to use their shampoo and conditioner, if I'm being honest. Do you? Oh, yeah. I used it today. That's where this fucking load of bird's nest came from. <laughs> but, yeah. Get it. Get on it, folks. Yeah, I got some of that shampoo in my, in my uh, shower, too. Hey, whether your resolution is to work out more or to travel to new places, be sure to travel to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping with the code DRUNK. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. One last time. One last time. Sorry, I've been drinking. 20% <laughs> off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code DRUNK. It's the new year. No pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. Support the show and get 20% off and free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. Hell yeah. Get on it, man. And look better and smell better. I do think no one Absolutely. really cares unless they're they're taking something from you, yeah. which is kind of fucked up. I of mean, course. like for whatever oh, reason, yeah. the SNL vetting process is like joining the CIA. So that's, <laughs> that's definitely made it yeah. interesting where they're just like, yeah, you can't. I mean, you're not running for fucking office. You're trying to do <laughs> yeah. impressions on a weekly show. I don't know when this became. Yeah, I know. You find the outrage a little disingenuous, do you? <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty bold take on my part. Um, yeah. I, like, I thought the same thing. I saw <laughs> SNL just had a like a Gilbert Gottfried tribute. I'm like, do you remember what he's, he said horrible shit? Like, you would never have him on now. That's the irony. I know. Wow, yeah. We always talk about that. It's like, there's a street named after George Carlin. I'm like, he's called black people the N-word. Multiple <laughs> like, times. <laughs> there's a street in Utah, Carl Malone, whatever 
Boulevard, and you're like, this guy fucking impregnated a 13 year old. Is that right? Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, that, you should have two streets. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. But yeah, the movie's coming out. It's gonna be end of. We're gonna have a big premiere end of June, and uh, which is like a month away, and uh, and then it'll be out in theaters in July. I can't wait, man. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be big. Please go see it. We're gonna, theaters. I theaters. I'm gonna be on the big screen. I'm not. I'm like the lead in a big screen film. Wow. It's gonna kill me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be like fucking uh, River Phoenix outside uh, the Viper Room. We should go and do a full Paul Rubens in there. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be that guy who like throws yeah. off my hat and I'm like, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's go, Fred <laughs> Willard. Meryl. I'm gonna drop a name. Meryl Streep, who's a friend of mine. She said. Uh, she's like, you go to the premiere and everyone. Gives you a standing O and says, you're the greatest and you're going to win an Oscar and we love you. She's like, but that's not a real. You have to go see the movie at the theater. Yeah. That's when you get the real kick in the pussy. That's tough. Uh, because you're sitting there and you watch people like get up and leave or that people sounds, are just chatting. That sounds just like Meryl, man. The I know phones, it too. Not, I made it the part with the cook and the pussy. That was, <laughs> that, that was me. That's the Meryl I know. That's that cool. Was, that was paraphrasing. <laughs> but you know, that's what you, I think they all do that. They'll put on hats and, you know, fake mustaches and whatever. And then dildos and go, and they'll watch the movie, and you see people just going like <laughs> yawning. And going, Ugh. Yeah, um, Ooh, that would be tough. I saw the master on in the theaters, the PT Anderson, and a guy got up. It was like two black people got up the scene where they're all dancing naked, and the guy was like, "Man, fuck this shit!" <laughs> and they got up and walked out. And then like a half an hour later, just an old white guy in front of us, he got up and walked out, and I'm wow. like. Boy, if they were sitting here, they'd be like, oh, jeez. I saw a couple black people leave uh, Jojo Rabbit. They were like, this sucks. Fuck this. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, yeah it wasn't for them. Movie too. You didn't like it? Well, I've talked about this on a, a lot of podcasts, but the quote at the end I find, so like, I feel like, I know this is like maybe woke or whatever, but I'm like, they made a movie where like the Nazis are like sweet and innocuous. I'm like, what is this? They're like kind of cute Nazis. And then Silly. the quote at the end... Is kind of insane. I don't remember. What's it. the quote? Pull I gotta find. I gotta pull it up. Oh, you have a producer. He, he can pull it up. Can pull yeah, it up. Jojo the, Rabbit quote. Google bitch. I'm like a. I'm like a. I'm very sensitive towards uh, anti-Semitism. Jews? I don't. I'm like. I'm like a closet Jew. I'm okay with it. Sure. Um, <laughs> let everything happen to you. Beauty and terror. Just keep going. No feeling is fine. Oh, that bugs me actually. Uh, About a Holocaust movie. Let it happen yeah. to you. They're yeah. like, hey, just be cool, man. Submit, like, dude. Yeah. Great quote. Get I on think the train. I think it's a a, a sweet quote. But, it, but yeah, at the end of a movie about the Holocaust, yeah, yeah. you're like, hey, man, just be cool, fit. man. I'm That's like, no I don't remember like, that quote. I don't know why there wasn't. I love Taika Waititi. I think he's awesome. I, I didn't. Uh, he's a Jew. That, that uh, right. quote bugs me. But no, I, I did enjoy the movie a lot. And I thought he was hilarious as Hitler. I go, that was like really funny. No, there was some there was some good stuff. There was stuff I liked and it was sweet. It moved me, but I did not. Uh, that, I don't remember that it. quote. That bugs me a little. Wow, let it happen, folks. But that was one of my favorite movies of that year, for sure. I, th I think he's just an awesome filmmaker. His movie about the vampires, you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, that was yeah. funny as hell. Yeah. He's a great idea. Energy vampire, they suck your energy. That's so good. He's so good. Um, yeah, very good. But yeah, I, I liked that movie. I didn't love it. Yeah. Uh, the Nothing worse, though. Like You're talking about going to the theaters with the mustache and everything. Nothing worse than an insult where they're not directing it at you because it means they meant it. Yes. I was at the, com I've told this before, I was at the Comedy Works, opening for Schumer, sold out, she's killing, the hottest crowd. Pete Holmes did a guest set. Killed. Killed. He just happened to be in town for some reason. I was the middle. I did okay. Schumer was killing, and I go take a shit in the stall, and I heard guys washing their hands going, that tall guy, that goofy guy, fucking hilarious. And the other guy goes, I know what, Schumer's really funny. She's killing. And one of them goes, what do you think about the middle guy? And they were like, oof. Ooh, he sucked. <laughs> Oof. And I'm shitting. My my clothes are on my my pants are on my ankles. And I, I was just like, I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> they were like, no, no. And they like doubled down. How about it a green bad. room bathroom for that occasion? I It'd know. be nice. It reminds me of two stories. One, I mean, any Henry Phillips story, I just start laughing before I can even get oh, to it because he's, he's just so the funniest funny. guy. But he has one. He plays guitar. He's the best. I yeah. Mean, Punching the Clown is him. incredible. Yes. Punching the Clown is yeah. the best movie about comedy ever. He also has one, Punching Henry, which I'm in. And uh, he's playing the guitar, and in between songs, he sees like an old couple in the front row, and she leans over and goes, I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the same thing. He's like, you can't get mad. She's yeah. just totally genuine. Um, also, have you talked to Ron on about his story in uh, Switzerland? No. Yeah, he told me this with Daniel Simonson yeah. and Adrian. It's br you want you tell it. Him and Daniel, they do the last show of the tour. They, they're on tour with Louis in Europe for like six weeks, mm. and it's just like 
arduous all over Europe, 12 countries in six weeks, whatever. And it's the last night. They do the show. They go to the diner after. And it's Adrian, Ronan, and Daniel Simonson at the diner. And they realize there's a group of women from the show at the booth behind them. And they just go through the whole show. And they talk about how Louis is a genius. Oh, wow. And they're literally like... The fat girl sucked. <laughs> He's like, the guy with the accent stinks. <laughs> and then they go to like Ron on. They're just like, he kept yelling. He was so wow. loud. And they call him the Jew. They're like, the Jew. <laughs> the Jew was too fat. He stinks. <laughs> and they just have to sit there and listen to the whole thing. And then they're like, all right, let's slunk out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and Ron on gets up and he just hears like a crash. And he looks down. It's, it's like a cartoon. It sounds made up. He looks over, and Simonson is laying on the ground. Like somehow he fell I out have of the fallen. booth. Fallen. He, he fell, and the whole table's like, accent. "Wait, what?" And they like point. They're like, "That's him. That's oh, all of them." No. Like they're all sitting there. This Norwegian and then they guy. said, "You were all very funny." Yeah, they're like, "You guys are that's great." Yeah. Um, and then Nate has the classic one on the cruise. The cruise yes. ship. He's on the elevator with his hat on, and there's two people talking across him about how bad he was. Ooh, how bad the comic was wow. not knowing that he was standing there see this this is something a yeah. lot of i don't think a lot of uh, artists go through oh i remember Jeez. opening for al lubell there's probably 12 years ago we did an awful gig in like montauk or something and uh he was great i fucking bombed and i remember being in the bathroom and just oh, same as you i was in the i was in the stall and i just heard a guy goes man that opener sucked he was just mm. and i'm just like I, I'm done peeing. Do I just, yeah. do I come out? That's and then I, I was just like, fuck it. I come out and they're just like, oh, hey. I was like, hey. And oh. it was like, it was just like a standoff. There was oh. nothing. They didn't like take it back. No. They yeah. knew I heard it. Yeah. I would have waited. Fuck that. Nothing you can do. That's when yeah. you pull your pants out and pretend to shit, you know, just to buy some <laughs> well, time. Well, yeah. I mean, I remember doing the Joker's Cruise uh, <laughs> and not bragging. I can't believe but you did that. We, it was years ago. It was fun. I had yeah. fun. Yeah, it's fun. It doesn't feel very you. It's not. I know. It's I the can... most fun. That's why I'm saying I'm surprised you I did know. it. I'm not fun. <laughs> no. But, uh... <laughs> but you know you're not fun, and that's but nice. Self-awareness is that's something. That's good. Uh, that helps. Alan. So, I think it's I, ego. I, uh... <laughs> I, I remember getting off and some lady came up to me. She goes, you were the funniest. And Rich Voss is right there next to me. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, your friend's prettier than you. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Best comeback. Yeah. Was she prettier, great. though? Because you yeah, are better I'm, than Rich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. Sure she was. I'm sure Rich was honest. I I Rick, Rich probably has 800 of those locked and loaded from oh. just doing this forever. He's the, That's what Colin calls him, the king of the comeback. He's, He's so funny. Dude, so he good. got me once on Opie and Jim. I was just, I was the new guy, and I zinged him, and it got nothing. And there was a guest, like some writer or something. And he goes, sir, you like comedy? He goes, I love comedy. He goes, what do you think of Mark Norman? And the guy goes, I'd never heard of him. And I'm sitting next to the guy, and Rich goes, that's what I thought. And it fucking <laughs> killed, and it crushed me. I, I didn't say a word the rest of the hour. Wow. I, I went home and like slept it off. I was so hurt. I remember I bombed a roast once, and Rich goes on right after me, and he goes... <laughs> he bombs one line and goes, you better laugh or I'm bringing Sam back up. Ooh. And it crushed. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Oof. It, it, but I, as I was leaving, I was like, that was pretty fucking good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I respected it oh, when he did great. it to me. You heard his opener at the Patrice Benefit. What was it? It was like a month after Saget. He goes, well, they wanted that. we wanted to have Saget. And he said, over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damn. Oh, Wait, what happened God. to Saget? Uh, <laughs> he did a show. Ah, uh, do well, you have any? Do you have any peeves or wrecks or bits or anything? Um, well, I have this. I just came from the sports weekend. I was at the Red Sox game and the marathon and the Bruins. Is this anything? I'm at the game and all these. There's like these new crop of generation of people that don't get baseball. I'm like an old man Witherspoon, and there's literally it's a three-two game, four-two, bases loaded, two outs, like eighth inning, and there's two. They're women. I'm just painting a picture. Not generalizing. Two women with their back to the field trying to start the wave and mad that no one's getting on board. They're uh, like, come on. I what do you do? That no one one, got on board. two, hey. And I'm like, the fucking bases are loaded. Yeah. Like, this is it. You do the wave when it's five, nothing, yeah. eight, nothing, seven to two, when the other team's up. Like, we're in the middle of a rally here. Well, right. So fuck the wave. Ah, the wave can be fun. I because baseball's long. Baseball's long, it and there's long, a lot of nothing man. happening. Yes. The wave at baseball is good. The problem with this is they're trying to make it about them. 
Like, right. We want to start this. We want to be a wave group, but it's about you. We're watching the game here, you coos. Yes. Get out of here. Just pick the moment. You need the moment. Yes. I've started the wave. I've been the wave sure, guy. Sure, I don't mind a wave. I used to drink. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was the wave guy, and it was about me. I wanted to start the wave, but I wanted everyone to have fun, too. But you waited for the right but time. you wait. It's got to be 5-2 yeah. in the seventh, and then the opposing team is up, and it's just, you know, whatever. This is a crucial moment, and they're like, come on, the wave. And I feel like I'm 100 years old. There was another moment. The, the Red Sox pitcher had a no-hitter through four and a third. Mm, and wow. then he gives up a base hit. And typically, you'd clap. you stay. Hey, good effort. Yeah. And nobody even, I don't even think anyone noticed. I'm like, ah. you tied 13 in a row. Damn. Anyways, those are my baseball piece. Well, baseball, yeah, I'm I'm with you. That, that you got to applaud the performance. And as for the wave, it's like sex. You got to pick your moment. You can't just try to fuck somebody during like a heated moment. No, I, now I, there I disagree. Oh, okay. Yeah. You fuck whenever you want to fuck. You try to fuck. <laughs> You know what? You're not laughing. When you're it wrong, you're weird. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'm with you, man. I love the the the, the perfect game, the no hitter. It's like one of the last great things in sports. It's pretty too. The field is pretty. The whole thing's great. I love. I like baseball. They just don't for let that guys moment. do it anymore. They pull them. They pulled what's his name after seven. The, the no hitter. Yeah, that's over. Yeah, it's a different. Uh, it's a different time. It's a different game. I mean, it's I grew youngsters. up. David Wells to put through a perfect game after getting shit faced the night before. I'm yeah, like, there's no cooler sports story than that. That guy yes, rules. All yes, all that well. shit. The LSD, the blow, the that strawberries. Guy. Th- that guy. Doc. That, Doc. Uh, what's his name? Brown. Oh. I almost said holiday. One hundred and twenty. Uh, Back to the Future, another one of my favorite movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. Da- Back uh, to the Future is good. Yeah. Doc Ellis. Doc Ellis. That's it. That was crazy. The no yeah. hitter, no hitter on drugs. Yeah, all that, that stuff is great. Like, is a guy who doesn't watch a lot of sports. I can watch any thirty for thirty, and I'm in because yeah. it's just so interesting. Yeah, sports are good. Sports are good. You got to do it. So I love sports. I, you like sports? Speaking of sport, how was Bean Town? You went to 19 <clears throat> different games in a in a weekend. Bean Town was great. I'm hoarse. I went to the Bruins game Saturday, Red Sox game Sunday, and then yesterday Monday. Well, what's a month ago? Sorry, but uh, Wait, Patriots on. Day, Red Sox, two Red Sox games, two one Red. Bruins games, plus the marathon. Wow! And that's Patriots a lot. Day in Boston, it's a big deal. It's a, you know the marathon. It's Marathon Monday, and it's a holiday only there. It's which I didn't realize till I was like 30 years old, literally. Uh, maybe not literally, maybe 23 years old, but it's a holiday. It's like a holiday in Massachusetts. I thought it was just an American holiday, Patriots Day. You have it off, you go to the yeah. marathon, you get drunk, you have a party. That's how I felt about Mardi Gras as a kid. And you're like, well, I guess this is our thing. Yeah. And uh, they didn't even have it in New Hampshire. Like my cousins were like, we have school. What are you talking about? I'm like, what? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we go every year. And uh, the last two years, it was COVID. So we couldn't do it. And uh, my friend Bart and Kant, Jason Cantor come and uh, it's just it's just the best. You wake up at eight thirty. They start drinking. You, you know, you cook breakfast. Every you got the news on. And you have the same conversation every year. Yeah. You imagine running twenty six miles. Oh my god, that's All crazy. Right. My ankle would hurt. My knee hurts when I get out of bed. Yeah. It's like they, literally the same dialogue. <laughs> they shit themselves. I shit myself from uh, drinking too much. They're yeah. they're running twenty six miles. Yeah. I've heard of all R- Rosie times. Ruiz. She cheated. And that was great. <laughs> Crockpot. Uh, yada yada. That should be a thirty for thirty. Rosie Ruiz. She which cheated at the that? marathon in nineteen eighty. What? I she know this. She like, yo, it's amazing. She cheated the New York City Marathon. I said that weird. New York City Marathon to to qualify, and she like took the subway. What? And then she like pretended to That's be hilarious. Yeah, she pretended to be hurt, and that she like got across the finish line, went to the medical tent. She qualified. There she is. Wait so a minute. This great moment. I feel like I would still lose. I would just like you know, I would still show up late or right. something. That's crazy. Wait, wait, you're saying she took the subway during the race? Yeah. Wow, and, that's fucking hilarious. And she pretended that it was just so hard on her. So this is Boston here. So wow. Boston, I believe all. She. Women. It's hard to find the video. I try. I searched for it. But so she wins the marathon. <laughs> yeah. And at that time, there's the watch. Oh, uh, don't even pay attention. So at that time, there's this guy Bill Rogers, who's like the greatest American runner. And I think he's a New England guy. He won the Boston Marathon. There he is in the middle there. He lo- he won the Boston Marathon like four years in a row. I think that was his third year in a row. And at this conference right here where they're standing. There she is. They have the little wreaths around. Yeah. I don't know if you can find the video. It's Love hard a good to wreath find. around. I have it on um, <laughs> I have it on DVD. I searched and searched. I couldn't find it. But um, he, they sit down at the press conference. And Bill Rogers is like the king of running. He's the runner. He wins it every year. Mm. He's like our guy. And he shakes hands with her, and they're like, this is the winner, Rosie Ruiz. And he literally, like, looks at her body, and he does, like, a... 
Uh, and he does like a visual like what wow Boy? because he's just looking at her legs being like this woman won the marathon and then he started asking her about intervals and her splits and she's like i don't i don't really know what you're talking about and he's like no competitive runner doesn't know about their intervals or the split that'd be like i just ran i don't know i don't know what my pace was Damn. so there's that and then somebody asked her about wellesley college in Wellesley, Massachusetts, is an all-girls school, and they the whole school comes out and goes crazy for the first woman because it's like it's a right. women's school, and they asked like, "How did you feel about running through Wellesley?" And she was like, "That was cool." <laughs> I liked it. And they're like, "Did you feel anything?" She's like, "Yeah, it felt good." What? And they were like, "This is really weird" because there was like there would have been thirty thousand women like, "Ah," yeah. you know what I mean? She was a woman's not talking about her feelings. Something is off. So she didn't give anything. <laughs> and then there were the two, the lead runner and the second place runner were like. I was in first place at the 18th mile. And then mm. someone was like, I was in second place at the 18th mile. Yeah. Well, I, di I didn't see this fucking woman. And so slowly it took time, but after like a week, and she also shaved like, I think like 25 minutes off of her New oh York time. My, that's Damn. hilarious. Which is a mile a minute. Love when a yeah. woman shaves. It's one, one, I mean, a one minute a mile yeah. in like, I don't know what's October to April, six months. So was she a good runner at all or just f she's no, fine? No, no she, she's just a fraud. Yeah. I love but she this had lady. like, she had like a chubby ass and like, yeah. she had like, like thick legs. I like the idea of her like running up the subway stairs, like trying to shit herself <laughs> just, you know, for the realism. <laughs> but yeah, she's fascinating. And so she did do it. You can find all these videos of her just Damn. doing this bullshit. Wow. So what's her, what's she doing now? Is she working in, in the government? I, I think, assume. Is she a politician? I think she's dead. Uh, Is she? Look well, her up. I think so. Yeah. It, it, ran, a long it, time ago. it ran its course. But um, Rosie Ruiz. Ruiz. Good yeah, for her. She That's died. hilarious. She died in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> she got what she deserved. There you go. Um, <laughs> damn. But That's anyway, so we go every year. You go to the, it's just a special day. You all get up, you have your breakfast. They're all drinking. I used to drink a lot there, but I don't now. And then you take, you drive. You still in. enjoy it sober. Oh, I love it. You drive into the city. This year, Sarah came for the first time. And you drive in, you go to the bar, and just a festive atmosphere. The game starts at 11. It's the only pre-noon professional game in America. Mm. And then when the game ends, the, the racers have finished, and they announce it on the big screen and everything. And then when you come out, it's like the race has been going on for about three and a half hours. So you get the slower, like, blue-collar, regular people coming yeah. through. And I cry every year. I'm not even, like, it sounds silly, but, like, the rooting for people. Everyone's rooting. And people put their name tag on. Oh, yeah. So you're like, come on, John. Uh, or they have, like, Boston police, uh, state trooper, fire department. I'm running, for, I'm running for Susan. And I'm like, do it for Sue. Yeah. And then people give you, like, a high five. Some people run through doing this, and they're videotaping. And then we had our friend. You can follow your friend around. Oh, fun. You That's have, like, awesome. an app, and it tells you where they're at. And it's just it's the subway what the hell it just um <laughs> it gives me uh hope it, it fills yeah. me with um uh joy it's and love inspiring and yeah it's beautiful i and love yet, it every year you're like i'll run next year and yeah fuck it but would, the you, best would you ever run in one of those things you think or no no nah, i want to if i was I, I always want to but it's then it's bad for you it just beats the shit out of you yeah. i mean i used to when i was a kid like 20 years old i ran nine miles like quickly Mm. And that would have been the time to do it, but then I started drinking excessively. Sure. But I feel like you're fast. I've seen you run, and you're pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, I still run. I still run at a good clip, but it's like... Run on. You... That's, we were just talking about this. It's like, <laughs> I have the energy and the lung capacity to run, but now it's like blisters and shin splints and sure. your knees and yep. your hips. But there's guys that are fucking 70 that run. Yeah, and crazy. And the longer you're there, you watch runners that are like... They're like fat. They're like fat people. They're old people. They You can do it. It yeah. is cool when you see a fat dude who's fast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of... Well, fat, a lot of fat guys have amazing calves yeah, because they got to yeah. just support that yeah. crazy, disgusting body. So much run on tuck. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's also got a special coming that's out. That's right. So we got we to gotta get him on here, too. Everybody's but. got a special. Uh, that's my day. It's your day. Uh, he's got a great podcast called Joe and Run on Tuck Movies, which uh, I want to just call it Joe and Run on Talk. We have to ditch the movie now that I'm a movie star. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just like, I like that you guys talk movies we talk it's, this just devolves into movie talk this podcast so much because we both just watch a shitload of movies but uh ronan is a tough dude to talk movies with he's a fucking hater yeah he yeah, he has that reputation too and i, I try to be defensive as a guy that gets that he rap. has good taste as well i'm not trying to yeah. just slam him he has very but good he taste. hates the first few episodes we're like we just started talking about classic 
movies and he like hates ferris bueller he thinks wow. john Hughes is a favorite. bad guy he thinks john candy sucks what, what? yeah john I mean, candy but john hughes bad guy or not the movies are great yeah no he's Some an idiot yeah, okay no, it's a <laughs> bad you. take it's a bad take well he's like a conservative john hughes so he uh, you know ronan thinks he's like in the kkk or whatever well all right uh, but, but so he also we. but he but also the movies are good he also uh he likes movies that are super bleak. He doesn't like anything with like a hint of. He likes you know. Sopranos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves Sopranos, but he also loves season eight and nine of Seinfeld. So he's, oh, he's all over the place. Right, he's he's out of, he's he out thinks of... they're the best seasons. Don't which I'm go... like, that's literally the worst take. Yes. Thinking seasons eight and nine of Seinfeld are the best seasons is literally that's the dumb. worst take. Don't go see his special. I get mad at people for getting mad at me about the Sopranos. I'm like, who cares? Just think what you think. But then when people are like, season eight and nine are the best, I'm like, you're a literal piece of shit. Yeah, it's like and I people, hope that you die. It's like when people tell you Friends is better than Seinfeld, you're like, oh, uh, well, we can't hang you're out boring. anymore. Yeah, you're, no, you're a boring you're, you're piece a of shit. I'm yeah. like that with people that think Casino is better than Goodfellas. I'm like, yeah, I can't even have a dialogue. They exist? I've never There's lots that of them. Cycle. Chris Allen is one. Uh, Chris Allen also, by the way, I just messaged him today. He said Liz Hurley, Elizabeth Hurley, is unattractive or not? He's, she's not hot. She's uh, still incredibly hot. Still I send a picture. Well, today this is our discussion. Today, I want a picture of every woman he's put his penis inside. If Liz Hurley is not hot, well, here's <laughs> this is what this is the dialogue we had today. He, I texted him. Liz Hurley is still smoking hot. I texted so him hot. this photo. Let me. Oh, the Hugh Grant got today? the hooker. Can you pull remember? up her Instagram huh? from today? Oh, that's right. Trans, I believe. Was she? I think she was trans. Elizabeth Hurley. No, no, the hooker that Hugh Grant got. Well, I, I want uh, if you can get well, today's like photo. Like, she's yeah, in a blue bathing suit. Oh, okay. There it is. It's the classic. Show me the best looking girl in the world. I'll show you a guy who's tired of fucking her. That's exactly. Liz Hurley and Hugh Grant. Like I mean, the what's his face just cheated on Rihanna. Right. And you're like, there you go. Hey, stop, Rocky. That's it. So this photo, I sent this photo to Chris Allen. I said, I just want to remind you that your Elizabeth Hurley's not hot take is one of the worst takes ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's get some more. Matt, scroll, uh, scroll is, through some of this. Current Hurley's current? Yes, dude. Current, this She's today. in her 50s. And wow. then so he writes back, what do you make of this? He writes back, are we doing this? Because I could bring up Sopranos. And my point is, are we doing I this? I will make a case that Sopranos, I can make a wait, case. Wait, click on that one. Jesus Christ. Wow, smoking hot lady. I can make a case that Sopranos is not good. Maybe you disagree, but I'll make an argument. Now your turn, Chris. Make an argument that this woman is not attractive. Yeah. Well, that's the shitty part is like it's all preference, but you can't say it's like when people go, Jennifer Anderson's gross. You're like, all right, you might not like her, but she's not gross. Your wife is gross. How about that? You know, like you can't just say gross. <laughs> I always jump straight to wife when someone you gotta says go something wife. I don't like. Yeah. I don't, you don't like the Sopranos? Your wife is gross. And I fucked your mom. <laughs> how do you like that? Remember Bobby Kelly's old joke about the guy that doesn't know how to bust balls? You're like, yeah, fuck you. You suck. Yeah, I heard your mom's sick. <laughs> like, I heard your mom's sick. I heard your perfect mom's sentence. Sick. Perfect punchline. Your mom's sick. <laughs> not dying. Doesn't have not cancer. Yeah. She's sick. Well, sick is good. It's an umbrella. It's an heard. umbrella for all the uh, I heard all the your illnesses. Mom's sick. Uh, One of the best jokes I ever. Heard. It's I in the grapevine. I heard your mom's sick. Uh, and it's an insult to him. Oh boy, that's cool. That's basically what these roasts have come down to. It's just like your mom has cancer, your dad was sh uh, shot in the face, you know, your your daughter was a miscarriage, whatever. Yeah, that's these roasts now. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I heard you got assaulted. Let me work at a yeah. type five on that. You used to be like, you drink a lot, you know, hey, you're fat. Now it's just <laughs> going straight to a uh, horrific shit. It's By the like way, the roast, uh, every, the most, the thing I'm most talked about with interviews that people that aren't my friends is the roast battle with Sarah. That's like the number well, one. It's, thing. it's amazing that you did it with your wife. I mean, that's pretty. Um, it's pretty hilarious. It's I guess so. It's so weird to me because we're just comics and I'm in the relationship. So to me, it's just like yeah, we just did a thing. Yeah, well, you're I guess both, to outside. You're both, like this is insane. You're both good joke writers, so it's like. To get it's a it's a hilarious thing. Like how, think about how many people can actually do that. Yeah. Right. Well, we didn't even write the jokes. Tom Dustin did, but <laughs> nah. Funny guy. Um, TD just uh, blew out his Achilles. Oh. Yeah. What? That's yeah, bad. How? He was like pushing a boat in water. His Achilles erupted. We gotta like. Oh. Well, he's like. I think it's like a GoFundMe. He needs surgery. Oh, he's got no money. Send money yeah. to Tom Dust. He's uh, he's in Key West. Probably. Tom Dustin. Yeah. yeah. He's give, give, give the real name. If I don't know Dustin, that. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't do nicknames. Tommy we're D, plugging you need a some charity money. Help some, guy, some guy named Tom Dust just got like three grand. <laughs> um, yeah, there was up. That, well, His Achilles is Tom Dust right now. Yeah. The, uh, it was not a GoFundMe, right. but a whatever the fuck it's called. But it was up for like a day. Yeah. And then That's um, horrible. 
Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll send you the. That's link a long someday. recovery for an athlete. So for yeah, for regular people, that ain't good. No, somebody said they're like, well, they put a cast on it, and they're hoping he doesn't need surgery. I'm like, yeah, maybe that pack of cigarettes a day for 30 years will help that Achilles heal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, we'll see. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we'll, we'll, we'll send him some hilarious cash. guy. You ever do that, Rome? You should do that. I should do it. Where is it? Key West. Nah, it's, it's fun not for you. Yeah, it's fun. It's great. I went. It was awesome. <laughs> but Mark, I'll, we should do it. Together. I'll show, I'll show up in black socks, sneakers, and a and a hot coffee. Yeah, yeah with the post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Key West is a it's a magical place. You go down there, your problems melt right off you. We did jet skis all day. We that drank all awesome. day. The shows are fun. Yeah, yeah it's fun. It's that, probably a chiropractor, I'm sure. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. Get yeah. your neck scraped. <laughs> Maybe they got a TV with the Knicks game. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Do you have Do you have any bits you want to try? Uh, I dude, I've been like, uh, I've been on a vacation. I'm not, I'm afraid to like, I'm like, I blocked your number in my phone because I've been uh, gone for ten days. I haven't even kind of written anything. You gotta have an idea brewing. Just something. I mean, even the thing you said about the baseball game is funny. What do you, I mean, you have yeah, maybe. I mean, I'll see. I don't know. When, but I'm on vacation. This is where we're different. This is where we're different and we're very different. He can turn I go it on off. vacation. I, the whole thing is off. I'm out. I'm just mm -hmm. out on comedy. And then I'll, I'll pump it out when I'm, you know, I like, I care about family and friends and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but, overrated. You know, Weird. You guys yeah, are gross. more successful. Weird. It's a sliding scale, you know. There you go. Uh, it's all about let me balance. See. Yeah, a lot of these just are bits. Uh, you guys, you got one. Go I got ahead. one. I'm trying. Let me tell me what you think about this. Hold on. Let me go through notes. Okay. Everybody's looking at their notes. Uh, I'll, I'll fill time here. <laughs> okay. Every, this, I, okay. This is an idea I had. Everything's backwards now. Like it used to be. Like, what do you do on a date? Now you ask what their mental illness is. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like, like you know, she's got borderline personality while you while you're having appetizers, and then like three months in, you're like, oh, software engineer. That's interesting. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You learn that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny. I like that. Something there. All right, I'll play with it. Yeah, that's funny. All right. All right. Yeah. That's funny. That's how you do. You really save it. I'm like, this is shit. <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> I know, right? Mine is a, a completely half-baked idea. Yeah. Oh, here's a tweet I wrote down. This could All be right. This isn't All a right. bit, but um, you know how like Nolan Ryan has seven no-hitters, but he has like 21 one-hitters, which is like more impressive. Like he's got seven no-hitters, which is amazing. But like twenty one hitter, like he almost had thirty no hitters. Right, I'm exactly like that with shitting my pants. <laughs> I've shit my pants like seven times, but I've almost shit my pants oh. thirty times. <laughs> That's part of the tweet. I don't know. I like it. There's That's funny. To it. Yeah. Anyways, at, at, at the very least, it's a great stat. Yes. <laughs> Let me double check that because on podcasts. You say a thing, people are like, you fucking retard. He had 31 hitters. I'm like, I know, sorry. So let me just get. Can't focus on the numbers that much. Let me get much. the right thing here. Yeah. No one right. I think it's 21, though. 12. Excuse me. I reversed it. I'm dyslexic. I got, got mine. It sucks, too. But is there anything here about how, like, to me, uh, LGBTQ is weird because trans, most of them, lesbian, gay, bi, is all about your sexual preference, who you're attracted to. But trans is just a gender issue. So it has really nothing to do with who you're attracted to. So it almost feels like my racist uncle made that list. Like, ah, they're all weird. Put them together. You know? It's almost like when you're, uh, your grandfather's like, he thinks everybody from Asia is Chinese. You know, he puts them all together. I don't know. It's, it feels yeah. weird that those are lumped together because trans has nothing to do with gay. I think yeah. it's an excellent point. Well, I need the yeah. bit. I'm, Keen I'm, observation, yeah. though. Okay, but I yeah. think the China thing could hit. The China thing is a funny is a funny uh, connection. Like we should get we should get sushi. Ah, I hate Chinese food. You know, your your, yeah. your grandfather just thinks everybody Asian is Chinese. <laughs> Throw it out there. Give me some laughs right here, if you could. Please, uh, thank you. Matt, you're good at that. You're good at that. Or the or the laser beams. The boom, 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 boom. You know. We'll do that. Did oh, you yeah. watch the Baylor? Give me an air horn. The documentary about the Baylor murders? No. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's on Showtime. Yeah, it's really good. That's probably why I haven't seen it. Yeah. Showtime. But they do They do make good docs on Showtime. Yeah. It's uh, Showtime at the Apollo. It's a documentary about murder. Yes. Love they, it. Makes they sweep you off and yeah. kill you. They hook your neck. Yeah. <laughs> What about this? Is this anything? Yeah, let me let me redeem myself. Redeem. I was watching the news and it was like the local news and this guy was a pizza delivery driver. He saw a guy get held up at gunpoint and he called the police and the, the uh, reporter was like, why didn't you step in? And he goes, bitch, I make $10 an hour. You think I'm stepping in? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, what does the money matter? <laughs> if you were a millionaire, would you be like, oh my God, why did you run in that burning building? Like, well, I make a million dollars a year. I feel like I had to do something. Oh, that's right. funny, yeah. You know? 
Yeah, so you're like, I feel like if I'm if I'm rich, I'm more likely to like not want to go. Yeah, in. yeah, and as if D- Domino's paid you forty grand a year or forty <laughs> grand an hour or forty dollars an hour, you'd be like, all right, I should step in. Right. They pay me well. Well, it's like he heard that from someone else saying it when it makes sense because it makes sense. Like if uh, somebody robs a restaurant and then runs, and they say to the busboy, "Go get him." Right, and he's like, "I make seven dollars an hour. I'm not going for that." Yeah. That makes sense in the context. He's like, that's outside of my job description. Right. But this case, that this, guy, it sounds like that guy's just stealing someone else's point that made sense. I see. It's also like you're like at a... <laughs> but even with the bus boy, you're like, well, you should, you could just help too. But the Bernie right. has nothing to do with Domino's. And the guy that held up in Gump Boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That's why it's funny. I mean, oh, it's I like... see. I see. There's something here for sure. Yeah, like if Domino's paid more, you would you would fight crime also, <laughs> you know? All right, I'll yeah, work on that. Yeah, there's something there. All right. Yeah. And but, also police make very little money too, so you could throw that in. Yeah, yeah. You think I'm, you, cops, you think I'm going in there? I make $14 an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is just a, a joke for a movie or a sketch. Maybe it's been done. There's a guy talking to his girlfriend. Uh, his, his guy talking to his buddy about his breakup, and he's like, don't worry. She'll find someone better. He says that to the friend. Uh-huh. If you just broke up, and I say, don't worry, yeah, she'll yeah. find someone better. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, yeah. that's fun. Yeah. That's a nice turn. But not a stand-up. I mean, I'm not kidding. I haven't written anything in three weeks. All right. I, well, yeah, what else you got? I feel like what we did two. Um, oh. Hit me. What about this? This is actually a premise that I've said nine times on stage, but I have no joke. You remember those things in the the waiting room? With the uh, you have like a block that goes around the the, the, the wire. Remember that thing and like the, the doctor's office oh, yeah. for kids. Yes. Oh yeah. The little yeah. things. I love That's like things, practice yeah. for taking a woman's underwear off. <laughs> like you got to pull it around the butt and then up, oh. down the knee, and then off the foot. It's kind of similar. Interesting. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> kind of similar because it's a similar thing. You pull in the panties right around the loop, and there's a loop de loop. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Something. I, I used to have a thing. Snips. Now I saw Michael Rowland has a similar bit, so I dropped mine. But it was about how he's trying very to good. he's got good stuff. Trying to turn a TV, a flat screen TV on, is like feeling up a woman. You're like, oh, I think I felt the nub there. That could be something. That's funny. Uh, That's funny. But he, I think he does it. And mine was working a little bit, and his killed, so I just dropped mine. He's yeah. really good. Yeah, he's got. I quoted one of his bits a couple of weeks ago on this. He's he's got good stuff. Yeah, this okay. might be nothing. Let me try this. It's uh, I was thinking about pre cum babies like that. that <laughs> Uh, it's already you, we're laughing yeah, already. You do. That well, that's like well, that's crazy. That can happen. I wrote as a. It's like it's like I wonder if you can tell who's a pre cum baby. Like maybe they show up early to parties they weren't invited to. Oh, is that something? I like that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> they get there too early. Yeah, and you're like, oh, we weren't expecting you. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't think you would show up. You weren't well, really wanted here. Well, maybe there's a twist. Yeah, and they're also they suck to be around because their parents are shitty or whatever. Right. Like, like, the twist didn't... is also, you can tell that way, but you can also tell because. Uh, they have never experienced love, <laughs> and they they ruin the party like yeah. a kid would ruin a party. You, you ruined, yeah. This isn't the first party you ruined. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right. There's. I'll play with that. There's something there. That's funny. I like that. Yeah. It's like a Stephen Wright's joke about uh, I was born cesarean section, you know. So now every time I leave a house, I go out the window. Oh, yeah. that's good. Oh, that's, he's fucking classic. Oh yeah. I love his bit about uh, forgot to take my seatbelt off on the plane. <laughs> so embarrassing. I'm like I'm dragging the plane through the. Lobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love his joke. I went to a, a diner, said, uh, eat breakfast anytime. So I ordered French toast during the Renaissance. Yes. <sighs> That's a great joke. He's great. Classic, He's got some classic joke. Couldn't find my socks, so I called information. They said they're behind the couch. Damn. So deadpan. I know. I actually uh, came home late. I put my car key in, the, in my apartment door, and the whole building started up. <laughs> oh, a- my God. It reminds me of Kylie. Brian Kylie also uh, some of the best jokes. The one some of the best jokes. About. I, I can't it. even say it without laughing. He goes, I got my, for her birthday, I got my eight-year-old daughter a bouncy castle. I paid for it with a bouncy check. Oh, damn. Bouncy. Bouncy check. A bouncy check. Uh, he's, he's a woo, baby. What is he? He's like, my wife gets uh, drunk, gets really, oh, I call my wife pumpkin because she gets smashed around the holidays. Uh, he's got the other one. Uh, well, he's got a bunch, but I'm six foot five. My wife is five eight, so she has no idea that I'm bald. Uh, I love that that's one. Funny. Also, he had the one about his brother had a heart attack, and the doctor said he could have sex again when you can walk up a flight of stairs. And he goes, "Why? Who's up there?" Oh, I like that. Classic jokes. I'm and then so the, 
Oh, wait, go ahead. I'm so Irish, my blood type is O apostrophe. It's a great <laughs> line. That one's great. And then the uh, marry a girl twice his age, you know that one with the baby? Mm. He had his, he had his. I mean, I gave away the punchline first, but he, he has a baby and he's at the, the maternity ward and there's a guy next to him and he's like, um, yeah, this is my, my son. He was born today. And the guy next to him goes, that was my daughter. She was born yesterday. And then he's like, who knows? Maybe they'll end up getting married. And he's like, my son's not going to marry a woman twice his age. Oh, oh wow. That's great. Amazing. That, I'm going through his Twitter right now. This is what I'm doing. He, he this, tweets stuff. He, tweets he's got, jokes? he gets like seven favorites because oh. he's got no followers. I got to follow him. Conan he's got writer. Some great stuff. I follow him. Uh, he was a Conan writer for many years. Great, great jokes. Sweet I mean, I discovered him on too. Dr. Katz, I think. I'm starting to think my dad has a gambling problem. Last week he lost me in a poker game. Uh, great. Uh, I bombed hard in front of him once at an LA bar show and it crushed me because I was such a fan. It was a brutal bomb. He's ripped too. He's a, he I told know. me he would just watch the yeah. I, I think he would just watch the Red Sox games on like two speed. So it would speed it up while he was just like running on a treadmill. And I was like, this dude's just like a machine. Yeah. He Jokes is. and yeah, he's great. He's, he's great. <clears throat> now I'm just reading tweets. Sorry. <laughs> well we plug your plug the special, the movie, where you're gonna be. Is this two episodes? I feel like I've been here for a month. Oh. I don't no, know where it's long. you, so we've went a little long. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm falling over. Um, where, uh, I um, watch. where am I going to be? Uh, those are all... i got to update my website, obviously. Um, I'm not good at business. What do you got in like the summertime? What, what's cooking out there in the future? Oh, I got Atlanta, June 24th, 25th. Same weekend, the movie's uh, premiering. Ooh. It's going to premiere, we, we think, uh, at the um, Beacon Theater, I believe. Wow. Uh, not the Beacon Theater. Yes, the Beacon Theater. The Beacon That's Theater. amazing. Um, maybe I shouldn't say that beacon. it's not fully booked yet but um, anyways uh, the, the movie's coming out soon I'm gonna be um, in Atlanta punchline June 24th and 25th and then uh, August uh, oh June 9th through the 11th I think or 8th through the 10th I'm at San Francisco punchline Ooh! I love and that then, room. And then um, August, I'm in Nashville for the first time. Never worked Nashville. Zanies? Zanies, oh, yeah. Oh, that's a blast. And then uh, the special's out right now. It's called This Year's Material, Joe List, on YouTube. The movie's coming out in a month, but the special's the main thing. Go watch that. It's uh, amazing. Share you're, it. You're one of the friends, best. Comments. You're one of the best, not just working, but period. You're oh, really, you. you're really one of my nice. favorite you comics. Got a, you got a great podcast. Oh, thank you. I got, <laughs> got 1,100 podcasts. Uh, Mindful Metal Jacket's coming back this next month. And then Joe and Ron on Talk Movies on YouTube, which I'm going to quit because I'm a bad person. And, of course, Tuesdays with Stories every Tuesday. Here, here. And I can say I was at the, the, the we were both there at the taping. And it was Amazing. Lights out. So that's going to be a hot one. And, uh, yeah, what, what do you got? What are you going to be? Uh, end of the month, Toronto. We're doing two, uh, two theater shows there. Bloom Appell. It's going to be great. Uh, Providence, Chicago taping a special. Tampa, Cleveland, Houston, West Palm, uh, Buffalo, San Jose, you get the deal. Samuel.com slash shows. There you go. I'm at MarkNormanComedy.com. All kinds of good stuff. Stand up live. Irvine Improv. Doing some dates with Kreischer. Uh, Pantages Theater in Minneapolis. Uh, Cleveland at the Agora. All kinds of fun stuff. Give it a whirl. Tuesdays for Stories. Uh, we might be drunk. Get on the Patreon. Get a glass. Get a shirt. Go nuts. Kill yourself. Fuck your dad. Praise Allah. Thank you. Sunday's the day for my next bender. A bit of fever wreck, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon, and Norman's talking shit about the fucking Pope. And I get down in the same way. Up on the roof like a cop's coming, and naked Samuel is feeling dangerous. I'm out to lunch here in New Orleans. This woman doesn't look like I remember her and I